Celebrity audience relationships are inherently uneven, necessarily sliding into a transactional cycle. They are, after all, creations of capitalism. We watch them, keen to grasp onto the parts that make sense to us, and leveraging these parts to colour in our inconsistencies. What is most alluring to me is when this equation is ever so slightly off. Oftentimes the celebrities with the most rapturous audiences are figures who, purposely or unwittingly, seem uninterested in how this exchange should be orchestrated. This brings us to the interview. For what it is worth, I sympathise with Barbara in this interview. The director, George Cukor, once said, I don't weep or anything, but there's some part of me left bloody on the scene I've just directed. The image of spilling out and splattering over, the idea of abandoning the parts of me that didn't work and sharing the parts of me that do, the idea of there being a bodily cost to something as intangible and imprecise as communication feels pertinent. I firmly believe that all important conversations are some iteration of, I can't explain to you what I'm feeling because it is fundamentally ineffable, but if you would like to listen, I would like to try. In other words, all important conversations are a process of trial and error. And with a celebrity interview, these trials and their subsequent errors are inflated, as grand and obtuse as the people in frame speaking. Am I saying that Barbara's earnest you know what spooning is, don't you? Is as sweet as it is bizarre? Maybe. She is translating her version of normality for an audience predisposed to treat her as abnormal. Another side effect of celebrity. And Barbara Walters is trying to translate her subject's self-consciousness into a fully constructed human offering for her audience. An unfortunate side effect of being a journalist. James Berlin is mostly just sitting there, a side effect of being a man. The rest of us are balanced in between these three, catching the discarded phrases, nudges, glances. These are the tools which will help us sketch a more complete, albeit chaotic, image of everyone involved. And maybe this is what fascinates me so much about this interview. It is spotlighting one of the most controlling, and I don't mean to use that term disparagingly, people in the entertainment industry. We see her collecting all the fragments of her casual, Malibu-bound, jeans-clad persona, and holding them in her well-manicured hands before anything can be grasped at, interpreted, and misinterpreted by a wary audience. So when she says... No, you just can't imagine it. And then, but you have imagined it all your life, but then you can't mm -hmm. imagine it because it's never happened. And then it happens, and then you can't imagine it. But then you imagined it all the time. But now it's here, and so it's hard to imagine. <laughs> we know she is contorting herself purposely removed from the moment and skimming over all possible translations of what she will say. The distant second person. As a result, we have this delightful non-statement, a kind of verbal equation, riddled with tenses and incalculable, but sweet in its own meaningless sort of way. As the interview ends and Barbara walks away, we see her practically guffawing at James Berlin's half-hearted attempt at a joke. You know, it's tough when you're satisfied, he mutters. We hear Barbara respond between laughs. That's very funny. And with that, we are unceremoniously reminded that whatever piece Barbara left bloody on the scene she just directed was not her at all. But hey, it never is. You know, it's tough when you're satisfied. <laughs> <It's> tough. <laughs> That's very funny. 